This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. I ever heard Elvis speak. He would never call us stepbrothers. From that moment forward, we were simply his brothers. We were a family. We were only children when we arrived, pulled into a world the three of us could never have imagined. Elvis instantly stepped in as any older brother would and cared for us. Through the years, countless people came in and out of Elvis's life, but we were there through it all, on the inside, with the real Elvis. He became our friend, mentor, guide, teacher, and cheerleader. No one had more impact on me and my brother's lives. For as long as I can remember, Elvis used the same Bible, which went with him everywhere. When I was finally old enough to work for him, I was in charge of that Bible. I made sure the Bible made it to every hotel room where he stayed. I placed it neatly on his bedside table, where he wanted it to be waiting for him before and after his sold-out performances. For years, when he would call me to his room, Elvis would be holding his Bible in his hands when I arrived. It was well-worn, filled with his own notes and highlights. I was a young man thrust into a world that was constantly under the spotlight, and he entrusted me with that Bible to guard and ensure it was everywhere he went. In those private moments when he spent time with his Bible, I saw the real Elvis, a man rooted in faith. From the day we met until our last conversation, he shared that faith with me. It began with a special bedtime prayer our first night at Graceland, and ended just two days before his death in a conversation about Jesus, love, and forgiveness. In the seventeen years between, I was a first-hand witness to his faith in Jesus and love for everyone. Elvis wasn't perfect. Just like the rest of us who walked this earth, he was broken. Even so, Elvis knew he was blessed, and he loved to give to others. He extended the same generosity to everyone. His message was always clear. Treat everyone the same. Look at their hearts and souls, how they treat you. Even if they treat you badly, something could be going on in their lives at the time. So, you just look at them and say, I forgive you, and go on. Elvis believed in love and wanted that for me and my brothers more than anything. He wanted that for everyone. He lived it every day and found a way to share it with the world through his life and music. There came a time in Elvis's career when he began including a gospel set in his show. Thousands of adoring fans seeking the thrill of his signature music were introduced to his version of gospel songs and hymns. This was his testimony. He saw his music as a way not just to make a living, but to change lives. He saw it as a ministry. Elvis knew he couldn't perform miracles, but miracles happened through the power of his music. He was spreading the good news with the gift God gave him, his voice. The stage was his pulpit. The screaming fans were his congregation, and it was magical. Fans would come up to us talking about how the gospel set made them believe again. They came to see the king, but left knowing another king, the one who could save them. This was his legacy. Elvis released two dozen albums in different genres over his career but he only won Grammy Awards for his gospel music. If you listen to his recordings of gospel songs, you can hear there is something different, something more soulful about those recordings. The reason is because those songs contained a truth that reached more deeply into Elvis's soul than anything else. His favorite Bible verse was John 3.16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That is what Elvis wanted more than anything, for people to know God and come to faith in Jesus. Elvis sensed that his time on earth was limited. Shortly before his death, he sat down with the three of us, his brothers. He said, If anything happens to me, if I die, there's only three people in this world who can truly tell my story from the right perspective. As my brothers, you're the only ones who can do that. Now it's time to carry that torch, to see through the wishes of the king of rock and roll. Why another Elvis book among the countless others that have been written? Because there is a side of Elvis that has not been explored until now, his faith. I told the story of my life with Elvis in my previous book, Elvis, My Brother. 
Now I'm ready to share my first-hand perspective of Elvis's true motivation to share God's love through his life.